Thank you for coming. Thank you for taking an interest in uh, Jack and football. And I think I know almost every one of you because I've seen you see you guys in more than just football, more than just basketball. So you guys are a lot of things. So personally, I appreciate all your support uh, for our shows athletics. <coughs> so kind of the timeline, you know, we, we started our coaching search in early December, um, kind of outpouring of applications. So, I was glad to see that Parsons football is still relevant and definitely relevant in, in the state of North Carolina. Had about 80 advocates, um, put together a fantastic committee of very highly qualified people to help make this decision. There's no doubt in my mind that we uh, had the right decision decision made with uh, Coach Deese. Um, Coach Deese will talk about himself uh, a little bit, but you know I've had the opportunity to work with Coach Deese before. He was a mentor of mine, and then I got to actually coach with him. So having him back around is a blessing for me and I'm, I'm very excited for the future of Jack and football because I know he's going to do everything possible for the future of uh, Parsons football, specifically our student athletes. He's somebody that's definitely going to take time to mold these guys and the uh, young man that will be uh, better future fathers, husbands, employees, and employers. So um, definitely excited about it. Uh, Coach Deese, we'll turn over to him and uh, let's welcome Coach Deese. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Um, I, I want to start by introducing my wife right here. This is Brandy. Um, and my wife, she's my, my moving partner. We'll get into that a little bit where she's been helping me move furniture in and out. Okay. So this is Maya. She's five. This is Jersey. She's ten. She's not shy at all. So she's going to ask a lot of questions. So, Kind of want to, uh, as a privilege to be before you, I'm excited about the opportunity. I don't take it lightly. Um, I'm going to go over some slides so you kind of understand me a little bit, my coaching philosophy, um, what my mission is. Um, you know, all praise to God for allowing me to be here. Um, and you're going to find out I'm a man of faith, and that's extremely important. So I'll roll through these slides. If you have any questions at the end, I'll be more than happy to speak with you. But I think you being here to show that you are very interest, interested and genuine in terms of the direction of the program, how I'm going to treat your sons in this program and my expectations of what it looks like. And I hope you have a better understanding once we're done here exactly about who I am, okay? God fear man of faith. Um, when you know me, you're going to understand that faith comes most, uh, most important to me. It's the center of who I am. It's the center of my being. Proverbs 27, 17 is going to be the foundation really of our team of what we do. Iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. We're going to have to build and grind on each other. We're going to have to make each other better as teammates, as coaches, I'm going to challenge my coaches to help make me a better head coach. We've got to build upon each other, make each other better, and that's going to be transitional to what we do. I'm a father and husband to an amazing family. All right, I couldn't ask for a better family, more supportive family. If you know anything about college coaching for the past 13 years, the hours I've worked, the things I've done, the time I've been away from home is extremely challenging, especially when she's been raising these two beautiful daughters of mine, and she's done a really good job, so I couldn't speak no more about her. I'm very passionate and detail-oriented. You'll start seeing, the guys will tell you, Coach Dees, he went crazy, he flipped out. I mean, I'm that guy that, that coaches with passion, I live with passion, I love what I do. I'm excited about each and every day about the opportunity to touch and connect, reach and grow and develop through your sons as you know, future fathers, future employees, employers. I'm open and honest. I'm open and honest. If your kid comes to me about playing time, if your kid comes to me about what I got to do, I'm going to be straightforward with them about the process in terms of playing time, in terms of about behavior, uh, character, things they need to improve on. I don't sugarcoat it because I've found in my 13 years of college coaching that the ones that struggle the most with care, uh, player development are those who work on the great lines to try to tease the behavior. For me, it's going to be like, this is what I see. These are your shortcomings. This is what you need to work on. You know, this is what's affecting you. This is what you're doing great. I don't hold back to try to sit here and say, okay, I want to be, I want to be your best friend in the world. I'm going to be honest with you because I'm a coach, and I think as parents, sometimes <coughs> the hard transition you do is being honest with your child because the, your child may have a reaction that you don't really like because they're going to be disappointed. Uh, for me, it's like you need to see the reality of what he did. So you can see I'm very open and forthcoming when it comes to what it looks like. I don't deal with great. All right? I'm resourceful and positive. All right? I'm going to make the most out of everything. I'm not going to sit here and worry about whatever program in America has, all right, what we don't have. I'm going to make the most of what we have. You're going to see that as we transition these slides, some of the things that I've worked on since I've been here, I'm trying to make the best out of any situation that I have. And I'm thankful to have the support of Jake Thomas and Dr. Poole and the things they've done since I've been here and the things I've seen that they've done with other staff. And that's why I'm excited to be here. 
Why here? And God placed me here because I'm not here by chance. I truly believe that. When you see me, you want to hear me talk about you know, all things work together for good, those who love the Lord, those who call into his purpose. All right? I believe that God put me here. Now, did I have a plan? All right? When you told me two years ago, when I was sitting there coaching the national championship in 2017, that I'd end up in four shields. No. 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 Wouldn't even thought about it. I was at the height of my career in terms of college coaching, the things we accomplished in our second year. But God led me here. My wife was able to transition and get a job at Indian Trail. And so here I was in the office. And Jay contacted me about the position as a substitute teacher. I said, thanks, Jay, but no thanks. <clears throat> I'm not sure what I'm going to do, what it looks like. And when I told him that, I was just like, I mean, surely that cannot be what I'm going to be doing. That cannot be where I'm going. I didn't know what God was having me to do at that time. But then we said about two weeks later, and I was like, man, I kind of wish at this time I would talk to Jake about that position and just filled it out. And about two days later, Jake called me a time, called me again and said, hey, look, the position opened back up. Would you be interested? Interested, I said, absolutely. All right, so I came down here, and now it's lost me to where I took a substitute four-time position, and I got to be a little bit what they call undercover boss. You guys seen that, that episode? All right, so I'm in there teaching in these classrooms, seeing these students, and everyone thinks I'm a substitute. Come on in. Thank you for being here. So essentially, everyone sees me as a substitute teacher. When you go in this classroom, they're like, okay, we've got a subject. And I'm like, okay, this is not going to go very well right here. All right? And so it was a matter of me getting to know them, but I got to see them from a side that not traditional any coach that gets hired gets to see them from. All right? They didn't know my background. They didn't know what I did. So I got to see how these kids interacted in the classroom, how they walked around the hallways, and then I got to sit here and say, okay, there's a way for me to try to connect with this kid, all right, if I'm here. So I come in here every day with a positive attitude, all right? At the time, I didn't know the position was going to open up, but when it did, I was excited because I was like, I've seen so much where I feel like I can make a connection with these players going forward. So fast forward now, I'm here. The one thing I was always told, and one thing was, um, I'm sorry, that we're blessed to have here at Forest Hill is if you ever coach high school football, all right, if you ever coach, get in the business, you better make sure that your, your principal and your athletic director are on the same page, that they have the same mission, that they're great people, that they have a passion for it. And there's no doubt between Dr. Clue and Jay Thomas that we have that here at Forest Hill leading the way. Um, so that's why I'm here. And I'm here to change the culture. I'm here to change the culture. It's going to start one day at a time, one play at a time. I'm going to connect with these kids. I'm going to grow them because everybody wants to win, right? Everybody, everybody's excited about wins and losses, but it doesn't start there. We got to win over here in the classroom first. We got to win in the hallways first. We got to win out in the community second, and then we got to win out here on the practice field. Winning, wins and losses will be a byproduct of everything we do over here to build kids, to get them interested in taking ACT early. To get them started off as not graders with a high GPA so they're not ineligible to play for us. We got to get every kid on the same mission, understanding our goal and our purpose long term because football is temporary. I played it longer than most, but am I playing it now? No, I'm coaching. Some kids don't want to move on beyond high school to play college football. That's why I want to build them into better, stronger sons and daughters, I mean, future husbands, all right? I want to build the whole person so they're bigger than graduation, okay? There's life after high school. We got to have a purpose and we all got to see that. So we talked about programs, theme for many synergy. I'm big on synergy right here because the creation of the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. We got to work to collect <coughs> that. And I'm just not talking about me and players, I'm talking about community, I'm talking about parents. We're all in this thing together. We got to understand that if one kid can affect the outcome, can affect the negative or the positive. We got to rally around each other in a positive, asset, um, positive um, frame of mind in terms of how we build things up together as a collective group. So when I talk to my team, I'm talking about synergy. We're in this together. What you do as an individual, your attitude, how you approach it is going to affect us as a whole. So that's going to be big when we talk about it. Culture unity is the most important team attribute. It really, really is. It can drive you in the ground if you don't have great unity. If guys break apart, they go their own way, they feel this way about the coach, they feel away this about the player, and all of a sudden you got clicks and stuff, you're not going to get together. 
Football is the ultimate team sport because there's so many guys on the field at the same time. You've got 11 total. We all have to be on the same page. And if we're not, we're going to struggle. Our team coach is what we believe, how we behave, and the impact we have on others. I want our guys to go out in the community. Like I said, that's a football player from Four Seals. I was really impressed with him. He said, yes, sir, please, no, thank you. That's what I want to instill each and every day. I want our behavior to be in classroom. The teachers are excited to see our guys because they're always sitting down before the bell rings. They're prepared, ready to work. They're asking questions. They're engaged. It's important for people with each other not. There's so many kids in the hallway that are afraid to do that when they're engaging with a teacher. I want to tell them that it makes a difference when you engage with a teacher by simply just using the eyes to look and engage in the conversation. That's extremely important what we do. Our mission is to train our players, um, to, train our players to create and grow a culture field for excellence in all phases of academics, social engagement, personal growth, and athletics. It's just not football. I want to see us grow as young men. Because one day, fast forward, all right, you're going to be future fathers. And you're going to have to have impact on your kid's life, on your marriage, and how you live. How, 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 how you set that about. And I want to make sure that we're impacted. I'm, I want you to be out in the community and you sell a program because you have a good interaction with someone that you may not even know and they're Forest Hills alumni. And they see you and they become interested because, you know what, he plays football. I, I really appreciate how that gentleman acts. I want to go watch a game. We want to get people excited about what we're doing here. When is the byproduct of doing, the thing, um, doing things the right way even when no one else is looking? It's one thing to get up there in front of a coach. A coach speak, you listen. But what happens when you walk away from that coach, you're out in the hallway? What happens when you go to the grocery store? How do you behave? How do you carry yourself? All right, that's the bigger picture of thinking. I want to trust our guys to do the right thing when I'm not around, when other coaches aren't around, when Dr. Cooley's not around. I want us to be trustworthy, dependable, and where people can really connect to us. Our purpose is to help each other become better students, teammates, sons, employees, employees, and future fathers. If you ask me the one thing that I'm most alarmed about when I come here is there's so many students that don't see, see beyond the day. They're living day to day, okay? Do you know what your GPA is? Uh, no, I don't have a clue. Are you taking a ACT? Uh, no, not yet. It's imperative. It's imperative. If you take the ACT, all right, get a good score, a solid score, so you can get, be a missile. All right, but you have to have the GPA. It goes hand in hand. Kids are sitting here thinking all the time about, okay, I don't feel like doing this. They don't feel like doing it, and they're not thinking about how it can affect them down the path. They probably won't what? Do it. For me, I gotta get them to understand that that's what impacts your GPA. And you're gonna wish that you, you would have done it earlier. Because come your senior year, for a lot of kids, it's late. It's late trying to bring up that GPA. It's hard to all of a sudden start taking the ACT for the first time. We got great resources here that we need to tap out between Jennifer Wheatley and she's willing to come over here and meet with these kids about the SAT, let's go ahead and get, start taking it early. Don't be intimidated about what you heard about. Let's get that done. And that's something I'm going to always drive to these kids. We were trained players in all aspects of life. We are not just football coaches, but wide coaches. That's my challenge to each and every one of my coaches on staff. we got to emulate a good role model to our players. As our players know, and we'll get into it a little bit later, I don't cuss. You're not going to hear me cuss. I coach hard. My players are not going to cuss in my program. All right, there'll be a consequence to it. Why? There's a couple things. There's a couple things. There's a couple things that I do for that reason. Number one, you can get a penalty for it. In a game, you can get a penalty for it. 15 yards. Last time I checked, no football program in America can afford a 15 yard penalty. No one wants it. So for me, it's a matter of that discipline. That's the initial. But also beyond that. In life, when you go to apply for a job and you're working in a position, you're working in a bank, and someone comes in there, all right, they're not happy about their situation. They're talking to you, and all of a sudden, they start cussing at you going off, and your response is to come back to them the same way. Who are they probably going to let go? They're probably going to let you go. But they want to keep that guy that's got $100,000 in the bank, all right? You're probably going to get ridden up. But for me, it's just like I can coach passionately. I can get on kids, but I don't have to cuss at them. I'm coaching the wrong kids if i got to cuss a kid out to motivate. That's how I see it. But if I don't emulate that and I cuss them out in practice, if the referee says something to a kid out the way, what happens, what the kid's going to do? His reaction will be fire off. All right, so for me, we've got to have control of emotion, even in those crucial times that we've got to practice that on the practice field and the things that we're doing. 
So that's what we're going to be big about when doing that those small thing. Our goal is to exemplify excellence in all aspects of life. It's beyond football. If I can make you a better person, if we can take things serious over there, if we can do small things right, it's going to transfer out one thing. That's there's if, ands, and no buts about it. We want to graduate ready for college for work and life. Another breaks my heart more when I deal with a kid that wants to go play football in the worst way, and the only thing holding him back is because he <coughs> made poor decisions along the way. He didn't take care of the SAT, ACT. He didn't take care of the GPA. And then all of, all of a sudden, he's struggling. His world's falling apart because he didn't do the little things. We're going to do the little things coming up through the program, so it's a decision that you can easily make. I don't want to go to college. I don't want to play football. Great, but then we can go ahead and make sure that you prepare for the work. It's great if you have a trade job, something you want to jump, jump into. But I want to make sure that you still graduate with a great GPA because 10 years down the road, you may be like me when I was 28. That's when I decided to go back and get my second degree. I didn't have to worry about my GPA holding me back. You never know what happens down the road. You may want to say, look, I'm tired of getting passed up. I work hard, but every time I get, uh, don't get my promotion, it's because someone has a, a college degree. And then you may decide to go back. So you never know what that looks like. And then just for life, I just want you to make good life choices. And then last, we play great football. Play great football. I want you as parents, you as fans, you as staff administrator, I want you to come out to a Friday night and be like, no, those guys are having fun. They're enjoying it. It's a great experience out here. I like how they play. They're respectful. They're playing hard. They're willing to hit you in the mouth, but they're willing to say thank you and yes, sir. And that's the type of team that we want. You can manage guys for eligibility, or you can coach them for graduation. I think it's lot, um, important that we do the last. I'm just not all about, okay, easy eligible play. That's not me. It's just like, okay, are you doing a small thing? I'm, I'm telling you, I'm academic driven because I understand how important that is at the end of the day when kids get to senior, they still got that desire and that passion to carry on. And so I'm always going to do that, and that's something that's very important. My values are small, hard work. I don't like to waste time. No one does. Our time is valuable, so when we hit the field, there's going to be a plan in place. We're going to fly around. I'm not going to twiddle my thumbs. I'm going to have something dialed up. I believe in team unity. I want guys to love each other, be around each other. You may not be best friends, but you got to respect each other and what each other's doing and their role that they play within the team. So I'm big on that. And positive energy. Yeah, I coach hard. Yeah, I get on guys. But I'll tell you what, when I get on them, call them back over here and say, hey, look, this is why I got on We can't afford to have you make this mistake. I love you, and I want to see you do better. I want you, I want you to max out your potential. I'm going to let them know when they do something wrong. I'm also going to encourage them to make it right, and they're all fully capable of doing that. They're dealing with a set of people. If, if um, people like you, they'll listen to you, but if they trust you, they'll do business with you. They're going to find out each and every day, and I'm very genuine about what I do and what I say. And I think through that process, my career and the connections I've made, kids have seen that, and they understand that I'm all about them and their life beyond football. Football can take you a lot of different places, all right? But at some point in time, you're going to have to rely on the other things academically to take you to where you're going to end up. My daily challenge is to strive for excellence each and every day, never settle, never settle for average. We must cultivate unity every day. I'm not going to come and be like, oh, man, you know, we lost last week. I really don't feel like it. That was a big rivalry game. I don't know how I feel about practice. And I'm going to go get it. Every day is a new day. I'm going to attack and I'm going to challenge the guys each and every day. We can't go through the motion. Can't go through the motions in the classroom because it's going to carry over to here. We're going to go attack each and every day. A coach of excellence can only be achieved for doing all the little things correctly. Details separate. Details separate. And the players are going to get to understand me through this process of how sincere I am about the small things, about how your stance look, about what your mental approach looks like. I'm going to coach those things up every single day along with my coaching staff. Model behavior is what we talk about. Coach Shank, who I've been under, has been the D2 National Coach of the Year. They won the um, National Championship this year, he talks about RTA, which is excellence in all that you do right here. Our program will be a program of excellence. We will be coaches of excellence. We will be people who when see us, they see our players. We're going to be a reflection of great facilities. We will make sure that we're doing things the right way. Our clamps, our camps, our lockers, our kids. I'm a neat, orderly guy. I want you guys to come around to the field house and say, you know what? They keep it neat. It may not be a brand new facility. All right, I get that, but I'm going to respect that facility. I'm going to make the most of what we have. That's kind of how I think, and I want people to see excellence. I'm not just going to say, you know what, it's not the best, I'm not going to take care of it. That's not how I think. That's not how I'm driven. Well, I'm going to make the most of it. So in saying that, I want you to see some things that we've done in a little time that we've been here, and, and your, your AD, 
over here, Coach Thomas, all right, he helped me straighten up this room right here in terms of what it was. This was the old conference room right here in our field house. This is what it looked like before. And there's going to be a purpose why I want to show you all this here, okay? It's not necessarily a close song or anything, but this is what I had right here, and this is what it looks like now, all right? We had a great gift of $100, all right, that helped us get this table right here. We rearranged everything else. We swept, we mopped, we injected, we did it for a long time, all right? But we got this room to now, this is a piece of conference room, and the vision is eventually have some chairs out here, all right, that we can sit in and we can watch film, that we can buy clear at the end to watch film and take a look at it. So that's just the beginning stage of what that looks like. So this is our field in our field house. This was the old coach's office right here. All right, that was the old coach's office. You can see things are kind of right here, being away for a little bit and stuff right here. We want to clean that up and make it look like this here. So now what we've done, all right, that's my $125 donation. That's me crossing my leg trying to figure out how to use the camera right here. All right, and what you see here is now a little bit of a player's lounge where I'm trying to create where our guys can come over, have something they're proud of. All right, it's not a ton of money invested in that. All right, but I'm resourceful, right? I say on, I say on Facebook Marketplace, and I'm trying to find the best to do what I can to get things done right here so our players can come and appreciate, have somewhere to relax and lay loose. And the vision is, I would love to have a little television here for them. I would love, that's the vision, but obviously, you know, my stocking's only so big, I can go so far, all right? So I got a vision to it. So this is just another angle of what it looks like and we're going to continue doing some small things. All right, now this is my office currently. All right, this is what it looked like here. The vision was, let's clean it up a little bit. And now this is kind of where we are now. All right, we didn't go build out a new building. All right, I got this donated to us. All right, what a blessing to get that donated. That's a nice little desk right here. All right, but it also updates the building. Now it gives us a feeling of, hey, look, we're organized, we're going places, and it's nice and neat and clean. Guess what I'm going to hold the players accountable to? The same thing. We're going to take pride in what we have. My staff is going to take pride in what we have. All right, because I think when I'm sitting there talking about kids having pride and what they do, how they look, how people portray them, i got to live it myself. I'm going to live the example so our guys can buy into it. All right, this is new to me, and it's just not me. I'm just not some guy with a magic wand that says, okay, I'm here, let's go win all the football games in the world and stuff. It's going to take me. It's going to take you. It's going to take the players. All of us are in this right here. So it's going to take all of us to make a difference. We need support. Time to get off the sidelines. All right? What happens is coaches come in, and this, and this is what happens. Is I'm going to see how he does before I invest my time. I'm going to see how he does before I'm willing to invest any money. Okay? I'm going to see if he wins some football games before I get involved. Let's flip that around. What about the coach? And I say, you know what? I'm going to see if these kids are committed before I start coaching more, and I'll get very far. We all have to step up to the plate. I'm going to do it the right way. we got to be willing to sit here and say, you know what, I want to make sure my kid gets to practice. I want to encourage him not to go to practice. I want to be involved. We as a community, everybody here, we got to speak positively and life into these young men so that every day when they come home, they're excited. It's going to be hard. It's going to be challenging. I may get them on that day, but they don't know why I got on them. And you guys got to help me sit here and say, you know what, I'm glad he's coaching you hard. Go back and just improve what you need to work on. We need to be there to support him as opposed to sit here and just say, you know what, if, he, if, he's, if he's that way of a coach, then maybe you don't need to go to work out. It's going to be that. Because we have to push each other. We got to encourage. The difference, people ask me all the time, what's the difference between today's kid and last year? And I was talking to somebody. Back when I played, all right, my, my, dad, my dad was a diehard football guy. And he'll say, son, whatever your coach does, you go do it. All right, you go to practice today, you listen to him. If he tells you to run, you run. That's how we were here when I played. So when I went there, I hit. But now, it's a little bit different. Kids will say, well, you know, I don't know about him. I mean, maybe you need to feel him out, maybe you need to trust him. we got to push our kids to come and say, you know what? I'm here for a purpose, and that's to help bring them up just the way you want to bring them up, just like I want to bring up my daughter. He's doing the right thing. Am I going to push him in the classroom? Absolutely. Am I going to roll them if they fail to go to class or, or, or their target class? Absolutely. I would hope that you would want me to because I'm doing that for the big picture. So I'm going to stay on those guys. And they already know it. I'm going to hold them down to the small things that we're talking about. All right, so when we talk about me, the overview, essentially, for my players is the three sets of three. All right, this is something I got from Coach Shane, a little bit on my spill right here of it. 
right, respond to the middle, embody the culture which is there. It's all about the team, okay? We want to communicate clearly. If a kid has a reason, I'm going on vacation, death in the family, I completely get that. Communicate that to them. Kid decides to mispractice because his girlfriend was upset and he wanted to talk to her on the phone, I don't know if I quite get that quite as much. All right, you hear what I'm saying? So communicating things about why, why I'm not going to be there, that's extremely important. Put the team first in all your actions. We can't, we can't afford to lose a player because he gets in a fight in the classroom. It would be nice if we had some team, some players, some teammates out there saying, hey, look, let's just break this up. We don't need to do this here because we can't, have, can't afford for you to be suspended any amount of time. So those things are important right here. Behavior, exemplify, clean presence, all right, teaching mentality. All right, again, I don't want my guys cussing. That doesn't mean they're going to walk with me or cussing in the classroom. I want them to carry that behavior from what we're talking about into the classroom and beyond. Do things the right way. Embrace the grind. It's hard. Football's hard. All right, I don't know last time somebody put some toe pads on the helmet, but it gets hot out here in the middle of summer. It's hard. It's not going to be easy. But part of football is putting in the work so you can reach the pinnacle of what you want to be, whether that's go play college football, you're going to make those sacrifices. And then the one thing is I'll talk about is be honest. If you make a mistake, it's okay, own up to it. We'll work through it, we'll get through it. But don't make it worse by covering up in line. I used to be an investigator and it was obvious when kids were, you know, not kids, but families were lying back in the day because you go to them a day later, ask the same questions, you get told a different story. It's hard to stick to something that's a lie. Get your truth, it's going to be consistent, usually over time. On the field is how we play, not who we play. I don't care who we play. I don't care what they look like. I don't care what the facilities look like. I don't care who they got playing. I don't care how deep that roster is. It's going to be about how we execute, how we do things. We do the small things right. We practice hard. We take care of business over here. I feel really good about our chances of anybody we play. Again, that's what I'm not worried about anybody else. It's going to be what we do, who we are, our identity. Be disciplined, play your best this play. A kid might get beat on the deep pass. I get it, okay? We're going to love them up on the side. Our teammates are going to rattle around and say, we got your back. Quarterback throws it, <coughs> we got your back. Defense out there, we expect them to get to stop and love them up. That's how we're going to be. All right, win the turnover and field position battle. The reason I put that one up there is because if you look at the course of football, your teams that take care of the football, win the field position battle, are typically your teams that win. It's a percentage-based deal. And there's going to be things that we stress to our guys right here. <coughs> For anyone looking to follow me, connect with me parent-wise, Whatever, I'm easily available on Twitter, at Coach Steve's, all right? Jersey actually set up my Instagram for me, all right? I'm trying to get on that air because I know kids are moving to that, okay? And Facebook, you can find me right here at Jamie D's. It's important, all right, that we sit here and we, we, we have positive conversations with each other, that we be connected. I want to be connected to your kids, and I think it's important you guys be connected to me as a coach as well, all right? You know, the one thing I'm not going to do is I'm not going to play favors. I'll be honest, and I'll sit here and say, hey, look, you know, this is what I see. This is what I'm asking them to approve on. These are drills that I think that can get them there. And if there's a behavior, then I'm willing to address the behavior and talk it through as well because we want to make sure that we right any wrong that we have, okay? You can also email me as well. This is my cell phone right here. Number, if anybody's interested in that as well. So you can text me if you have concerns or anything of that nature. And again, I'm excited about four Hills football. I'm excited about this opportunity. And I expect this room to grow as people understand how we're going to do things, what it's going to look like. But I guarantee you, your players are going to get to understand me, know me, they're going to appreciate me, and they're going to say, hey, look, he's a lot funnier than what you think he is. All right, because I have that side to it. All right, but I also going to make sure that we work in detail, and we're going to make sure that we take care of the academic side as well. Any questions? Thank you for your time, and again, it's a pleasure. I'm excited, and let's keep on rocking and rolling. All right, thank you.